it was really impressive to see the joining forces across all the scientific communities and pharmaceutical industries, but also academic research labs. The vaccines that we are looking at now, they are based on years of research, but not only immunology and infected diseases. This is also research in cancer therapies. It's also biotechnology, molecular biology and genetics. The whole ecosystem is important in this. So it's focusing on innovative ideas, but also facilitating the mass scale production of the new vaccines. The vaccine research is not an isolated area. Science is at its best when it's interconnected and interdisciplinary. Only then it can create another value. So the technologies uh, that uh, the vaccines are, are based on, it's genetic medicine and also investigational cancer therapies. How is that possible? How is, uh, where, where is the connection here between creating an immunity and, uh, and disciplines like genetic medicine? So let's start from the point, how is immunity created? So when a person gets infected with a virus, then the virus starts to replicate in the body and then its components can be called antigens. These antigens are proteins, for example, like a spike protein from, from the COVID virus. And these antigens are triggering the body to produce antibodies so that these antibodies later on will protect the person against future infections of the same kind. In case of vaccination, the antigen is provided in the vaccine. So it's mimicking the infection also antibodies are produced as a response to this mimicked infection, but it's in a more controlled environment. These traditional vaccines often use enough inactivated viruses, but mRNA technology is slightly different than that. And here where the breakthrough comes from. So the antigen that I've mentioned before, this is a protein. And because it's a protein, it can be coded on a messenger RNA. So the messenger RNA contains an information for the body so that the body can make the antigen inside of its own cells. So vaccination based on mRNA, messenger RNA technology, triggers the body to produce the antigen inside of its own cells. And this antigen trains the human body, trains the immune system so that the antibodies are produced in response to this antigen, also giving protection for future infections. But here the difference is the vaccinated person never had a contact with the virus because the virus is not actually used in the whole process of messenger RNA. The whole process is actually quicker, it's easier, it's safer and it's more cost-effective. Also, on, the, on top of very fast vaccine development, we've had also experienced very rapid development of therapeutic antibodies. One of the techniques that uh, allowed scientists for such rapid development of therapeutic antibodies, a single B cell cloning. So the B cells, these are the cells which are responsible for antibody production. And these antibodies which are produced by these B cells are meant to neutralize the virus. So the scientists isolated and characterized the B cells from plasma of convalescent patients. And they were searching for those B cells which are producing the best neutralizing antibodies. They read the genetic code of them and then they chose the best neutralizing antibodies that they could find. And they repeated the whole process of creating an antibody as it happens in a, in a human body after infection. They repeated this process in a lab and they, they were able to mass produce uh, at, at very large scale uh, the virus neutralizing antibodies. So it's kind of mimicking the natural process of creating immunity, but much faster, much more efficient and in much more controlled environment. So we have like 30 years of experience in antibody production. We've mastered this process. So producing an antibodies for cancer and for autoimmune diseases is nothing new for us. But now we are able actually to switch the gears and produce other antibodies, which can be used for addressing other pressing needs. So the main lesson learned here is the significance of investing in innovation, investing in new technologies. So now we are 
seeing the breakthrough of the messenger RNA technology and the approval of messenger RNA-based vaccines will highlight many more possible applications of this technology. So, for example, it could be rapid vaccine development for other pandemics, and it could be also development of, uh, of the vaccines for the disease which are not yet addressed by the vaccines. On top of that, messenger RNA technology is used for several years in anti-cancer therapy research. So these are still early stage projects, but one day they can prove very useful as another therapeutic option in cancer. Also, new generation of enzyme replacement therapies can be created using messenger RNA technologies. Think, for example, of a gene therapy, but a little bit different in a little bit more timely controlled manner. The potential future scale of the messenger RNA technology is also yet to be unlocked. With the relatively simple and cost-effective production, we could achieve billions of doses of vaccines by the end of 2021. It's very impressive. It's very difficult to mass produce a totally new product in such a short period of time.